Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this short video, we will be solving nodal analysis uh, example 10.1. Okay, the techniques that we have to follow is, uh, these are the steps that we need to follow. The first step is that we have to convert or transform the circuit into the phasor domain or frequency domain. And then we'll solve the circuit by any of the techniques. Here we'll be solving it by nodal method. And after we have got the answer, we transform the answer into the phasor, from phasor to time domain. So this is the sequence, time to frequency conversion, solving the circuit, and then frequency to time conversion. Okay, let's discuss example 10.1, which is solved in the book. This is the circuit, we have to find the current I, this is the current I. So, as we mentioned, the first step is that we convert the circuit into frequency domain. And for that, the first thing uh, we need to do is identify omega and then convert all other values. So omega from here you can see cos omega t, so that means omega is 4 radians per second, so we noted that. And so 20 cos t will be magnitude 20 and angle 0 because there is no angle here, so we will write angle 0. Then the inductor is written as j omega l, so in this case omega is 4, l is 1, so it will be j4. Here it will, omega is 0 0.5, so it will be J2. And for capacitor, we write 1 over J omega C, but I prefer that we write this formula, minus J divided by omega C. It makes life simple. Putting in the value of omega and C, we get the answer, J2.5. So we have got all the components converted into phasor domain. So our new circuit will now look like this. This is the phasor value of voltage, capacitor, inductor, inductor. Okay, we're ready to solve this now. Okay, so the, again, now for the nodal analysis, the first thing is that we identify the node. Uh, this is one node, which is generally called reference node. This is node number one, and this we'll call node number two. And so we'll write their voltages with node number 1, voltage we'll call V1 and node number 2, voltage we'll call V2. So we'll solve for, and, and also we have marked the current directions on our own. We have taken this going from the source, this is going right, this was already given coming down. And similarly this one was given in the question going up and this one we assume to be going down. So at node number 1, at node 1, current entering is equal to current leaving. So entering is what? 20 minus V1, 20 minus V1 divided by 10. There is no need of writing angle 0. Uh, if it was any other angle, then we would have written. Okay, so then this one ix, ix is v1 divided by this impedance, so v1 divided by minus j2.5 and the third one is v1 minus v2 divided by j4, so v1 minus v2 divided by j4. And we can simplify this by multiplying by 10, we get this. Here also now we need to eliminate uh, J's from the denominator. We could have multiplied it by J10, but that apparently looks uh, slightly difficult for me. So I am using this and now we have to use this concept that 1 over J can be written as we multiply by minus numerator and denominator. So it is minus 1 divided by minus J. We know minus 1 is equal to J square. So j square and j cancel, so we have minus j as the answer. So 1 over j, 1 over j here, 1 over j can be replaced with minus j. And similarly, 1 over minus j can be replaced with simple j. Okay, so doing that, 
here 1 over minus j we are replacing with j 1 over j we replaced with minus j now we can take the like terms together or the same terms together so collecting the same terms and this is our final equation equation number 1 v1 terms v2 terms and the constant now we move to node number 2 and here also you can see uh, we have a current entering 2ix so 2ix we also have this current entering from v1 so v1 minus v2 plus j4 and this is leaving so v2 divided by j2 now ix we have to replace because we want to solve in terms of v1 and v2 and from here we can easily replace ix ix from uh, there is v1 divided by minus j 2.5 from here so replacing this this is our new equation and now we multiply this by tan j the lcm so multiplying by j10 you get these this simplify and simplify so this is second equation now that we have two equations we can solve easily to find v1 and v2 and the best way is to use the matrix method so we have all the uh, um, coefficients written in the matrix form and we know that from matrix equation we can find the unknown variable by this method for v1 it will be delta 1 over delta and for v2 it will be delta 2 over delta now what is delta delta 1 delta 2 let's see the determinant this one is known as delta we can solve by cross multiplying using your calculator in the complex mode will be easy so this is delta for delta 1 we replace the first column with the output variable here so delta 1 replacing the first column and then solving we get value of delta 1 similarly for delta 2 we replace the second column by this so replacing this and solving we get this as delta 2 now putting in the values v1 will be found from here and similarly v2 so these two uh, are the values of v1 and v2 okay so now we found v1 and v2 but we are interested to find ix that is the question so the current i capital x first of all we find from the phasor domain and from here uh, you can see that ix is v1 over this value so ix is v1 divided by minus j 2.5 we know the value of v1 this can be written as 2.5 angle minus 90 solving we get ix now this is in the phasor domain for time domain we have to write in the form of a cosine so we can write this as a magnitude cosine 4 omega t plus this angle so this is the answer and so the circuit in time domain now we have found the current in time domain so i hope this uh, gives you an understanding how you can solve this type of a question thank you